Welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. Are you struggling with metric conversions? I have all the hacks for that. We've already talked about how to do dimensional analysis. We've already talked about how to set up conversion factors for the metric system. We're just going to put those two things together, metric conversions, a breeze. So how many seconds are in 2.7 hectoseconds? So we're going to combine everything we've been talking about. We're going to write that given information. We've got 2.7 hectoseconds and we're looking for seconds. So we're going to put our 2.7 in our given. We've got to find our conversion factor. So remember, copy this down on your paper. I suggest making this on every page. Don't just write it and reuse it. Every single sheet of paper that you're going to practice doing metric conversions on, rewrite this. If you rewrite this like three or four times while you're doing your homework, guess what? memorized and you didn't even try to memorize it. Got hecto, second is a base unit. So here's what we're doing. Base unit's going to be involved, so we know we only have one step, only one conversion. But we've got to make sure and orient it correctly. Remember, whatever is on top comes on bottom. So our hectoseconds go on bottom, our seconds go on top. That's going to tell us how to orient our conversion factor. Then we look over here to figure out what is our conversion factor. Well, remember, the biggest unit gets a 1, hectos on top, it gets a 1. That 2 is going to go with seconds. So 1 hectosecond is equal to 1 times 10 to the second seconds. Now, if you're already familiar with scientific notation, you might realize that just means 100. And you are correct, a 1 with two zeros. That's where that 2 comes from. So we're going to multiply these because they're both on top. 2.7 times 1 times 10 to the second. And again, I'm only writing these three digits because of sig figs. Let's look at a second problem. How many megameters are in 5.3 times 10 to the 9 micrometers? Now, if you notice, this problem does not have a base unit in it. If a problem does not have a base unit, it's going to need two conversion factors. If we remember back up here, this did have a base unit in it, one conversion factor. Our given, that's the number in our problem, 5.3 times 10 to the 9. What are we looking for? Well, that's what the question is about, how many megameters. So we're going to start at micrometers, down here with that funky little U. We're going to go all the way up to mega. We've got to go through the base unit. Don't forget that step. All conversion factors have to have a base unit. So our first conversion factor is going to go from micro to the base, or just meters, micrometers to meters. But to get started, remember, take your given unit, put it down to the bottom. They've got to stay diagonal. So since micro is on bottom, just regular meters is going to be on top. And if we look back at our chart here, we see that the base unit is higher, so it's bigger. It gets a 1. And that 6 is going to stay with the micro 1 times 10 to the 6. Now we have meters on top. We want mega meters on top. So we need another conversion factor. But we kind of already knew that. So now we're going to go from our base to mega. So we're going to bring our meters down. they got to stay diagonal. And we're going to put mega meters on top. That's what we're looking for so we will be done with this conversion factor. The one good thing about when you bring the base unit down to the bottom, you get to put whatever unit you need on top. We needed mega meters. Mega is on top. That's why it got a 1. And then we're going to give it 6 to the base unit. 1 times 10 to the 6 meters. Now we're ready to put this in the calculator. Now remember, Numbers on top, you multiply. Numbers on bottom, you divide. So we're going to put this number in. Divide, divide. I know it freaks us out to divide twice in a row, but I promise it's okay. And when we got our answer, now since our first number was given in scientific notation, I went ahead and gave our answer in scientific notation. But in your calculator, if it's not set to scientific notation, you probably got this answer here, 0 0.0053 megameters. So that's converting metric units. Not that big of a deal. Let's practice on a couple of problems that are a tiniest, a bit more difficult, that truly makes you have to understand dimensional analysis. Convert 70 miles per hour to meters per second. If you notice, we have not worked a problem yet where we have units on top and bottom. That's new, but it's the same process. So let's see how we do that. Write down your given, what you're looking for, our given is going to go up at the top and our unit's going to come down. But let's notice something right quick. I set this up miles per hour. Now, we're used to miles per hour like this, MPH, miles per hour. 
But per, we write that with a little divide sign, meters per second. So miles per hour. Now we've got two units to convert. We've got to take miles to meters and hours to second. So we have two conversions to do all at one time, but it's okay. It's going to flow very easily. But you do have to pick which one you want to start with, miles or hours. I'm kind of a very logical person. I always go top to bottom, left to right. So when I have decisions to make, I'm always going to choose top and left first. So that's what we're going to start with first, the top. So we've got to find a conversion that's going to take us from miles to meters. Now, when we're looking at our conversion factor, there is not a conversion factor that takes us miles to meters. We've got one that says miles to feet. That's not helpful. Or we've got one miles to kilometers. Meters is metric, kilometers is metric. This is the one we need. So we're gonna pull that over here. Now make sure you've got your unit from top to bottom. Make sure they cancel out. So our 6.21 miles goes on bottom. Our one kilometer goes on top. Now we can convert our kilometers to meters. We just practice that. Base unit is meters. We're going to kilometers. Kilometers is on top. It's bigger. It gets a one. We brought kilometers down to keep it diagonal. We give it a one because it's the bigger unit. Meter gets the times three. One times 10 to the three. So our miles canceled, our kilometers canceled, and we have meters on top. That's what we needed. We're halfway there. Now we've got to work on converting hours. Hours, time, that's easy, we know this. But let's notice hours is on bottom, so to cancel it out and put it diagonal, we gotta put it up here at the top. That's a new thing we've never done before, but that's okay. Now, if we're gonna convert from hours to seconds, you may already know how many seconds are in an hour, and if you do, great, put that. So we're gonna go through minutes and then seconds. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Now that conversion was really easy to come up with. We didn't have to think about which unit was bigger, but if you notice, the one is with the bigger unit. So our hours are gonna cancel. Now we need to get these minutes into seconds, and one minute is equal to 60 seconds, so our minutes cancel. We've got meters on top, we've got seconds on bottom. That's exactly what we needed. We put all this in the calculator. Remember our rules. If it's on top, you multiply. If it's on bottom, you divide. 70 divided by 0.621 times one times 10 to the three divided by 60 divided by 60. I'm still using sig figs, 30 meters per second. Not so bad, right? Let's look at another problem that's even more complicated than the last problem. Ooh, I know, that looks rough, right? A car travels at a rate of 65 miles per hour. If the car gets 33.5 miles to the gallon, how many hours can a car travel on 25 pounds of fuel? Density of fuel, 6.5 pounds per gallon. Oh my gosh, that is a lot of numbers. How do we figure out the given? That's easy. Always go and look for the questioning words. How many? There's where our question actually starts. That's going to have what we're looking for and our given from here to here. And if you look, how many hours? That's what we're looking for. And then this other number is our given, 25 pounds. That's where we're going to start. All these other numbers in the problem, we're going to use those as conversion factors. So here's our given, 25 pounds. Now we need a conversion factor that has pounds in it. So we're gonna look back at our problem and figure out what number that is. 65 miles per hour, no pounds. 33.5 miles to the gallon, no pounds. 6.5 pounds per gallon, here it is, we finally found it. Now if you notice, the 6.50 is connected to pounds. So we're gonna leave the 6.5, wherever we put pounds is where we're gonna put the 6.5. And since we started with pounds, pounds comes down to the bottom. Gallons goes on top, pounds per gallon, pounds per gallon. It's okay that we flipped it upside down. And we're gonna put our 6.5 with our pounds. So pounds cancels. Now we're ready to find a conversion factor with the gallons in it because we gotta get this gallons to go away. Because remember, we're trying to make it here to hours. So 65 miles per hour, nope, said nothing about gallons. 33.5 miles to the gallon, there it is. And again, 33.5 is beside miles. So we bring gallons down and gallons is, is on the bottom. So it's gonna just have that one because the 33.5 is gonna go with the miles. Gallons cancel. 
We're going to put that 33.5 on top with the miles, and we're ready for our last conversion factor. There's only one left, and thank goodness it does have miles, and it has hours, and that's what we're trying to solve for. So we're going to put this, but make sure we orient it correctly. Miles was on top, so we bring miles on bottom. 65 is closest to the miles, so 65 stays with miles, and then we put the one hour on top. Once we cancel out these miles, we have hours left. We're looking for hour. We've got hour on top. That's how we know to stop. Put your equal sign, put it in the calculator. 25 divided by 6.5 times 33.5 divided by 65. And in my calculator, I'm getting 1.98. Now, that's three sig figs and I only needed two sig figs, so I rounded that to 2.0. Well, that's all I have for metric conversions. If that was helpful, press the like button. If you have another video that you would like for me to make, leave that in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, y'all.